And that leads me to the last one, and that is self-awareness. What I've done here is a bit explaining around why I think self-awareness is such a key role when it comes to servant leadership. And I will give you a tool that you can use towards people around you, but it's actually a really good exercise to do it yourself because it will also trigger a lot of your own views on behavior. I will get to that in a bit later. So the first thing is um, why self-awareness is so important, especially as a servant leader. When you are self-aware of your behaviors and of your feelings at work, you can show your skin in the game at work. If your team sees what you try to achieve and if it's beneficial for you and for them, they will start to see and to trust you to become more vulnerable. So acknowledging where your skin in the game is will help you to find a way how to become vulnerable. If you operate on a modus to get your KPIs in order, it is okay, it's not definite, by definition wrong, but it's often really good to show your vulnerability around what your skin in the game is around that, because that will have a massive effect how you act and therefore how your team responds to you. So skin in the game, will the self-awareness, if you create that for yourself, it will create also the skin in the game for that change. If you are able to change and if you want to change your behavior, you can tell the better stories for your team to follow the lead or to join the journey on change or to become more vulnerable and say, hey, this is actually really tough. How are we going to do it? The other thing is that um, you want to keep in mind that as a servant leader, you are a role model, not just as the role that you have in your organization, but also the behavior that you show. So the more you close yourself off, uh, off from yourself, the harder it becomes to become this servant leadership role model. Because you're, you're doing one behavior on your own and you're telling somebody else to do differently. If you have a leadership role in your organization, it doesn't really matter what type of leader, role or function you have but everyone has a role model position in an organization. So the behavior that you're showing will be the behavior that others will copy. So having the self-awareness where your behavior come from gives you the opportunity to change your behavior and therefore become more aware to show behavior to what you think is the right one. So if you want to have your team to create more of a trusting and safe environment where they have honest and open conversations and where they are collaborating with each other, if you as a leader can tell that in a really powerful way, but act in a way that you keep information from them, or are not there in um, important meetings, or don't sit close to the team, you show something else and what you're actually telling. And this is where also the language part falls into place. It's a really important thing. It's more powerful than most people actually understand until you become aware of it. Um, I, I've seen also a lot, like if you know yourself better, you start to know your people around you better. I like in my own experience, I now help so many people in one-on-one -on -one coaching to find out with the person where behavior comes from, where anxiety comes from, what it is that happened along the way that created behavior that you're now showing. I can only do that now because I've been through that journey myself. I understand where my pain comes from. I understand where my dysfunctional uh, behavior comes from. Therefore, I am more alert on other people's behavior, but I can also be more observant to serve others to find their own triggers. So for example, 
I, um, when one of my team members um, back home in the Netherlands, when one of my team members um, had their earphones in um, on every single time on a Tuesday morning. And the team was complaining about the fact that a person constantly had their earphones in. And it became a conversation around the whole convincing part, right? So it became a conversation like, hey, you're uh, putting in your earphones, like you shouldn't be doing that because uh, then we cannot talk to you and you're setting yourself outside of the team and we can never be a team. You need to start changing that. Like don't use your earphones. So now it's a team rule. Um, you all understand that that didn't have uh, the best effect, uh, to be fair. What I've done is I started to have a conversation with that one person from my own view. So I started to tell him, like, I know when I use my earphones, and it is often the case that either I am extremely high in my anxiety or I'm so stuck in a problem that I just need to close off myself for everything else and just focus on what is in front of me. I said, that is for, for me two key elements of why I use that, um, use the behavior of using my earphones. I said, I see a lot uh, on Tuesday that you have the same behavior that you use your earphones. Would you be able to tell me if there is a reason that I can support you with um, to help you out of that or are, is there another reason that it is normal for you the story that came up had to do with the fact that his wife passed away and he needed to bring his kids to daycare every morning and for some weird reason on Tuesdays they found themselves in a hurry in a stress moment to get on time on school he got in late he felt sad for the fact that he needed to leave his kids at school he felt annoyed that he was late at work and what he needed to do, he was so wound up in all the emotions that he felt is that he put his earphones in to calm down because he knew if he didn't do that, he would burst into flames if somebody else talked to him. It was I, the only reason for me at least why I could have a conversation around that is because I used my self-awareness around why I did it. And therefore I knew it is not something we need to blame or put on him that he needs to change. I want to find out if there is a reason more oblivious than I think there is and that I can help him with to start understanding. So I think self-awareness is key in whatever role you have, but it becomes even more key when you find yourself in a leadership role.